Canada's new tough-on-crime approach is coming. The Conservative government campaigned on it and have followed through with a massive crime bill. But before Canada spends more money on new prisons and longer terms, there may be lessons from an unlikely place, Texas. The state is known for its aggressive approach to locking up criminals. But now it's home to a new breed of justice, cutting down on crime and cost. Tonight, senior correspondent Terry Malefsky takes us inside Texas courtrooms to see how they're doing it. Here's his special report. The state of Texas earned its reputation for tough justice. For years, Texas led the United States for the number of prisoners and the number of executions. Texas has hundreds of prisoners on death row. And until 2005, Texas had the highest rate of incarceration in the world, with fully one in 20 of all its residents locked up. In the 1990s, when these scenes were shot by the CBC, Texas prisons filled to bursting. Most prisoners didn't even have cells, just a cubicle and a bunkhouse crammed with 30 men at a time. And yet the crime statistics were worse than those in other states. But then things changed. Ever since 2005, things have changed so much that every week at the courthouse in Dallas, you can see a Texas judge hugging criminals, even giving them medals for graduating from drug treatment. The judge says the old ways just didn't work. We've spent a lot of money, billions of dollars building prisons and housing prisoners, and it didn't get us anywhere. Jacqueline, come on up. Judge John Cruzo is one of a new breed of judges here running drug courts, which aim to keep criminals out of prison. Thieves, addicts, drunk drivers, offenders with drug or alcohol problems get probation instead of prison if they show up weekly to prove they're on track with drug treatment. And the treatment, the judge says, pays off. You fund treatment and you fund aftercare and you fund programs that will deal with that on a long-term basis that you avoid sending thousands of people to prison. It and sounds it, expensive. Uh, it's less expensive. Uh, Tell we've me about got, that. Well, we have data. Uh, this program that we run here, for example, uh, we had a university do a cost-benefit analysis. When every dollar we spend is $9.34 and avoided criminal justice costs. Other studies agree that putting someone in drug treatment costs about one-tenth of what it costs to put them in prison. Thank you, sir. And often, it changes lives. I was off track, and they got me back on, and I'm headed in the right direction. So, thank you very much. Well, the first thing you learn in a Texas courtroom is that the popular image of tough Texas justice is out of date. Yes, for years they built more prisons, and they stuffed them full. But then they got the bill, and Texas, yes, even Texas, reversed course. What they did was put fewer people in jail. Over five years, the rate of incarceration dropped by 9%. At the same time, the FBI says the crime rate dropped by nearly 13%. And they did that by spending on treatment instead. And Elizabeth B., you can do it, girl, ladies and gentlemen. It worked for people like Elizabeth in Dallas. She quit drugs and crime when Judge Cruzo told her she had to or go to prison. All righty, congratulations. Proud of you. Thank you. Great job. But to everybody, I encourage you to don't give up, put your head up, and we know that we can do it successfully without nothing. Thanks. That's all I have to say. Elizabeth has smartened up, and experts here say so has Texas. 
What happened in Texas is we did for a number of years have uh, very strict sentencing. Dr. Teresa May Williams oversees a drug treatment center near Dallas, where inmates spend long days and months kicking their addictions. The state funds it because the old lock em up policy threatened to bust the Texas budget. The war on drugs was to reduce the, if we reduce the demand, we're going to reduce the trafficking, we're going to reduce crime. Well, that blew up in Texas's face, California and several others. So what we saw is our prison populations quadruple. And on top of that, the dollars that were going into prisons across the country and in the state of Texas went up billions and billions of dollars. Drug treatment, she says, is both cheaper and better because graduates are less likely to commit new crimes than if they just go to prison. What happened if we just send those individuals straight to, to prison, straight to state jail? We just sentence them. We don't look at the drug problem. The data showed that 60% of those individuals will be out and committing a new crime in, on average, about 11 months. The recidivism rate for probation, the same kind of offender, is somewhere around 15 to 16 percent. So they reoffend at one quarter the rate of ex-prisoners, and even hardened addicts can be turned around. I smoked cocaine. For Catherine real. Griffin I mean, had six was, convictions for drug possession and prostitution. In my life. And I'm a person that had a $30,000 a month cocaine habit for 22 years. I am totally clean and sober today. Some of them She's been clean now for eight years, has a job, pays taxes, but if she hadn't been ordered into drug treatment, she would have gone to jail for life. A goner, you, you, yeah. You would have died in prison, basically. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Instead, she was sent to what was, back then, a new idea, drug court. They actually showed us, the inmates, that some of us do have a heart. Normally you say, probation, parole officer, judge, police, you freak out. They're the enemy. That's those folks. Not in the case of the drug court. They actually come in when the judge can tell you, how is Mary and John and Brenda and Cheryl, and those are your children, and that's the judge, and she can remember their names. That doesn't sound like the old Texas, and yet conservatives seized on the idea. Has Texas gone soft on crime? The Texas has not gone soft on crime. Texas is well known to be hard, hard on crime. Jerry Madden is a conservative Republican politician who says he's tough on taxes, too. And he chaired the committee, which fought to fund treatment and probation services, not prisons. It's kind of silly when we were doing. We were keeping people in there waiting for programs to come available. It might be a year and a half before that program became available. So we keep them in prison for an extra year and a half because they didn't have that program that they were sentenced to get by the parole division. Well, uh, each day in Texas costs you about 50 bucks a day. If you have a thousand people that are sitting there waiting for a course, that's, you know, $50,000 a day. It got so bad, he says, that Texas needed $2 billion to build new prisons. But Madden realized that for a fraction of that price, drug treatment could make new prisons unnecessary. It was the moment that I knew as an engineer that said, my colleagues are going to understand this. The public is going to understand this. What we're going to be able to say to them is, one, we're going to be able to spend less money. And two, if you look at the results that are coming out the other end, we're going to have better results. The public will be safer and we will spend less money. So Texas did just that, and it's quite a contrast to what's going on in Canada. The Harper government wants to increase maximum sentences and set more mandatory minimums. Texas did neither. To require more prison terms for drug crimes and allow fewer conditional sentences like house arrest, Texas is doing the opposite. Combined, these measures will strengthen our justice and immigration systems and will have a significant and positive impact on our ability to keep our citizens safe. But this approach to crime has already caused a spike in prison spending. Despite a declining crime rate, Canada's federal corrections budget has risen sharply from 1.6 billion when the Tories took power to nearly 3 billion last year. Next year, it'll be even more. 
Well, let me say it this way. If your goal is saving taxpayer payer dollars, making the community safer, then that is the absolute wrong direction to go. Down in Texas, they are pretty blunt about the Canadian plan. The public has a right to expect that criminals will be off the streets. This is the argument made by the current government in Canada, for example. What's wrong with that argument? Nothing, if you don't mind spending a lot of money and locking people up and seeing your crime rate go up. There's nothing wrong with it. Why would the crime rate go up? Well, because it did here. Because what you do is you put them in and they're going to come out and they're not going to come out any better than what you put them in. And you'll probably see the same thing in Canada that we saw here. Now, the state of Texas still has very tough sentences for violent crime. They still have the death penalty. They haven't morphed into a bunch of bleeding hearts. But consider just one example of what they are doing. They've cut back drastically on sending people to prison automatically for minor parole violations, things like just missing an appointment. That measure alone is keeping 5,000 people a year out of prison at a savings of $300 million per year. If you bring 3,000 prisoners back less, out of parole or four or five thousand people left out of probation I mean that gets rid of that 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 increase and this session for the first time ever Texas closed a prison closed a prison we closed one first time in our history it was historic after a hundred years, they shut the Sugarland prison, where Huddy Leadbelly Leadbetter once sang about watching the train, the midnight special, from his cell. Now they don't need the prison. The last inmates are cutting up the bunkhouses, and the state will sell off the land, all of which has other states looking to copy Texas. Well, I mean, obviously we know about you know, Mark Levin is a lawyer with a national and very conservative anti-tax group called Right on Crime. We've seen in the United States, states and conservative leaders moving in a much different direction than the conservative uh, party is saying in, in Canada, you know. And I really think the conservative thing to do is to be cost effective and to uh, hold defenders accountable. And uh, frankly, for many of them, they go to prison, they don't pay child support, they don't have to work in the private sector, they don't pay restitution. I don't believe that's holding people accountable. We are one in the Lord, and we say that our Instead, Texas is holding people accountable for the addictions which led them to crime, and they're doing it in drug courts like John Cruzo's all over the state. We have some more space in jail. Anybody want to go? Oh, no. no, I bet not. Now, for folks in this deeply conservative state, there are really two bottom lines here, not just saving taxpayers money, but also reducing crime. If you don't do both, it's just not politically viable in these parts. But they have been trying it now for about six years, and the data is piling up. They're saving themselves billions, and crime is going down. Terry Malewski, CBC News, Houston, Texas.